Can you hear me? No. Добрый день. Добрый день. Меня слышно? Да. Хорошо, все заработало. Раз, два, три. Да, слышно. Слышно. Саша включил запись, поэтому вы неприличными словами не выражаетесь. А мы потом обрежем. Да, я это самое сегодня не зашел. Вы нашли до солнца пятна, но я это самое я не успел зайти. Сейчас я прогноз посмотрю. По-моему, завтра будет хуже. А фильтр у вас прямо такой на, на окуляр, на всю, на объектив, на всю площадь объектива? На всю площадь объектива, да. Может быть, завтра утром будет видно прогноз такой. Да. Нет, в моем московском телескопе был черное стекло, было на окуляре, а не на объективе, странным образом. Оно ну, не плавилось это, почему-то, но... Такое, такое рискованное дело. Рискованное, да. Я так окуляр один раз сжег. Там дымился буквально. Yeah. So we have a speaker now. Or yeah. the speaker. But we cannot hear him. Yeah, but he speaks. <laughs> but, but we cannot hear. Oh. One, two, three. Say something. Test, test, test. What? Test, yeah, but very bad sound. If you can think, check second. it. Test, test. Test, test. It's better now. You want it louder? Yeah. A bit better. But Is this? Do you like this? Okay, then I... I... Let's do it without a microphone. So now it should be good. Now it's better, yeah. Uh, I, I, actually, uh, 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 when I use uh, the headphone, I, I usually switch to the microphone from the uh, laptop and uh, with, with all my headphones, uh, it, it uh. Works. Better. So the, 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 the standard microphone of the laptop works better than from the headphones. So you can hear me now. And I, but I, I think now you use microphone from the from the headphone. Just tap tap it and we will see whether you use it or not. Yeah. Ah, oh, I'm still using the bad microphone. Uh, Just take it easy and, and plug it. Then everything. Okay. So now everything should work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you sent uh, the, the lecture, uh, notes of your talk, which will be probably made available after, after the talk. Yeah, I, I can actually share them now. Um, oh, it's a bit paradoxical because how can you know what you will tell but still 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 <laughs> well the initial some initial segment i plan to tell yeah. so uh let me while we're waiting send file I assume Verishagin should arrive because he sent the, uh, didn't send any warnings, but. Uh. 
we actually even see your black uh, green blackboard hi yeah uh, i hope nothing embarrassing oh i i was rehearsing the lecture so <laughs> Ah, now, now Quelle is here. Yeah. Okay, I did something you don't like, and uh, uh, but I was lazy. I, I made kind of my document and transformed it into some kind of slides. Uh, but I still have no. One should be extremely lazy, even not to change the format into a portrait. <laughs> it's quite easy thing to do. I think only mathematicians are unable to understand this difference between uh, portrait and landscape thing. Or just to the landscape, I mean. No, it's, uh, you shouldn't say this. It's, it's, it's just a, a standard topic of jokes uh, on the internet about people using uh, making video with uh, their uh, mobile phones. Ah. Okay. Okay, but uh, let's not have fun. Let's be serious. Uh, I mean, let's have fun uh, with mathematics. Uh, and so I, I will speak about uh, simple things regarding to polynomial time pack learnability. And uh, but I, I will um, like repeat some things we already explained because I think if you repeat a few times, then there is a chance you actually learn something. So uh, let's let's go. And if you find it boring, just uh, try to speak faster than me and, and predict what I will be saying. So um, so what what I do here is something else. I first. Uh, so we spoke already a few times about um, why, why do we uh, consider training set and test point somehow differently? So we have two parameters, epsilon and delta, and pack learnable. But why do we need them? Why can we not just look at the probability over generating a training set and a test point together and see whether the algorithm, the classifier we learned, is correct on this? Well, and uh, uh, I, I find this uh, a very good idea because proofs somehow go through this notion implicitly and it creates some bunch of technical things. And so let us have uh, as a, a simple starting point before looking at polynomial time, let us look at, at this notion. And I will actually need it because I will um, explain to you that half spaces are pack learnable and realizable setting. And I will use this leave one out technique for it. So we don't need VC dimensions. And so we have simple explanation. Uh, okay. And so in all of the talk, VC dimensions will not be needed. So the, the plan is to have uh, three results. First, show that half spaces are pack learnable and that finite sets are, are somehow pack learnable if the size is not too big. Then the second uh, will be um, the difference. But so the, the, I will explain to you that there are some natural class of, of, of classifiers that's uh, polynomial time improper pack learnable, but not proper pack learnable. So if RP is different from NP, then the class is not polynomial time pack learnable. And third is about weak pack learnability it's the same as pack learnability. And for this, we will uh, speak about some uh, algorithm called uh, boosting, and it's important for machine learning people. Okay, so let's start. Um, so here I, I start with, uh, we, we don't think about computation time and our learning algorithm. Uh, okay, so first some notation, as before, I will always speak about binary not the, uh, by binary classifiers. Uh, so I'm sharing my screen. So I guess you see these annoying things. No, we we see the string, string the letters, but they are almost unreadable. So you should not 
uh, trust oh, much. Readable. They are very small, but you can guess what is there if you if you look seriously. But just just repeat something just to be sure that that everyone. Uh... No, it, it's small for everyone. I, I'm uh, coming. No, through. it's pretty normal to me. No. Okay. I... Uh, uh, I, I don't have my glasses, so for me it's uh, a bit too small. But I can I can read it. They they are small, definitely. Okay, okay, but just just if you read read formulas, important formula, it's a little bit good idea. Okay, okay, yeah. So we we have a set of y of outputs, and it contains two elements because we talk about binary classification, and we have a set x of inputs, and. Uh, X is without any structure, just a set. Yeah, yeah, just uh, well yeah. for now without structure, and and uh, later uh, we will have uh, a dimension in it. Um, okay, so uh, then we will take uh, so we will have a distribution over X, and uh, for training we sample n independent elements from X using this distribution. And uh, there is also uh, a true classifier. So a true classifier is, is an element from a set, uh, or a set H of mappings. So here is a set H of mappings from X to Y. And uh, um, a, a, a learning algorithm will take a training set, then the labels for the inputs in the training set, it will take a test point and it needs to make a prediction for this test point. Yeah, so the, when, we, uh, when we say that something is learnable, we just have X, the distribution and H, no, and Y and H. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it, so we don't have F, say, we just have these things. Yeah, we want to say that the class is learnable and so we need to check something for every classifier in H and for every measure on the input space of H. Oh, so F, uh, the, the measure is not fixed. No, the, no, we, we want to, to look to the worst case mm -hmm. measure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, so given a, a, a certain training size, the size of the training set, um, we look to the worst case uh, true classifier. So uh, H, small H belongs so let me write this formula a bit bigger. Uh, so, uh, so what we want it is if the training size becomes large, then worst case uh, over a true classifier in H and uh, a measure p over the input space of the true classifier probability that our learning algorithm predicts a test point wrongly should be equal to zero and the learning algorithm it receives a training set so this is uh, this is an element of x star it receives the true labels and it receives test points. So Bruno, I have a quick question. Yes. Um, so, I mean, another definition could have been to reverse the quantifiers, right? That we could say that for any measure, no yeah. matter what our, our, our learning will stop being correct in the limit, but maybe at a rate that will vary on the measure. So we'll have the supremum over measures of the limit is zero for every like you could say like for every probability measure ultimately will co will correct yeah uh, every, does it make a difference for uh, yes know, yes you you, you reverse your soup and you limb basically yeah, yeah. and so that's what you say uh, yeah that would be another naive oh, you should and also put the supremum you know, for for the uh, also for over age also before there are several yeah, of course but but, but yeah. this definition every function is learnable. Ah, is it true? Why? No, where you put the quantifier, there exists A for all P or for so all for P. For every P. P. So for every measure over the input space, 
we want that for large data set, the test error goes to zero. But right. we have to fire over A. No, I want a single A still. So sorry, here yeah. S over P N and X over P. And so all this thing should be equal to zero. Yeah, but in your definition, there is a quant existen existential quantifier over A before this. The class yeah, so is in, learnable in, in, if there exists A. Yeah. By and, naive definition, the A would still be unique. Yeah. 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 And I claim that in, if we change the quantifier over P, then it will be yeah. always zero. Okay. Why? Okay. Why? Because um, with high, if we take n large enough, with high probability, we will have seen the test point x already in the training set. Oh, so you mean x is finite? No. Oh, uh, even, even, even without that. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, assuming that uh, x is discrete. Sorry. If it's discrete. Ah, if X is discrete, right, right. But Sorry, I, I was in, in many in many models we do not have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Then then you're right. But okay. At least it answers to your question. The definition is not the same. Okay. But for some reason yours is more like is better behaved in general or something. Yeah, yeah, because I don't like all these definitions. I cannot remember them myself. And so when I'm the speaker, it's very annoying. So I to take one with fewer definitions. No, it's just my, I, I mean, again, like I, I, I fully uh, uh, respect the definition you're proposing, but I, you know, I, I would expect that I would still be satisfied in my learner. It's like maybe it's some measures of, like here there's some kind of uniformity of success over all measures, which, you know, of course is a strong requirement. But I could say like some measures are a bit trickier, but no matter what measure really is the case, eventually I will get better and better at it, right? Which would still be somewhat satisfy satisfactory. But okay, I mean, something to think about. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so um, then uh, let's have some sim simple observations. We already made them before. So if, if the set H contains only one classifier here, then it's clearly pack learnable in this definition because which mapping do we choose well we can uh, just ignore the training set and always map to to this uh, single point classifier uh, if h contains two classifiers and uh, they always contradict each other, these two classifiers. They predict the, the opposite label. Then uh, class is also trivially learnable. And so this probability will drop to zero as soon as n is at least one. So only for n equals zero, we give it training sets of size zero. Then we have uh, some error probability, positive error probability. So these are two trivial cases. And if we are not in these two trivial cases, then this pro error probability will always be positive. But let's make an exercise. Imagine yeah. that a a H consists of two functions, yeah. F and G, but yeah. they are different, but not everywhere. Yes. Uh, can people say whether it's learnable or not, what people think about this? Just let's make a, a poll. I guess not. You think not learnable? No. No, I would I would vote for yes. <laughs> <laughs> to create some 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 kind of uh, if so, a distribution is uh, uh, concentrated uh, only in points when f equals g, then uh, no learner uh, can distinguish this. But then th then the learner doesn't need this because we need to just to predict correctly for a point from the same distribution oh sorry yes uh, agree yeah so just just I, I i can try to provide some argument so imagine that the functions are different in some small set yeah. then uh, uh the, the, the 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 trivial uh, the, the, in most cases it's not important which function do we have and probability of error will be small yeah and if they are different in a big set, then in, with high probability, uh, our 
uh, learning sample will include uh, also the points where are different and so we can decide whether we have f or h yeah indeed G, and, and so it's the next slide let's prove that if h is finite then the definition is true so then it's learnable on average so okay i made up this name learnable on average uh, if you know better name so let us go to the next slide uh so here uh, uh, oh sorry i i first proved the negative result but we are oh, oh, okay so let, let, let's go to the positive result it's so on top is the definition again and i claim if h is finite h is learnable on average and so let's do as you say let's go for two functions f and g and so we need to fix a learning algorithm and so let us always pick f the first function unless the training data contradicts uh, a function in f so again the learning algorithm has training set the labels of the elements in the training set and the test point and it will always answer f of x the, where f is the first function in each unless uh, some label in y contradicts f and then it will choose g of x so the learning algorithm, let me repeat, is just taking the first function from H, which is consistent with the observations, and use this first function for prediction. Yes, indeed. And now we just have to prove that this satisfies the requirement. Yeah, yeah. And so if the first function is a true function, so if this H function here, and the supremo we choose H to be the uh, first function, then it will make zero errors always. But if H is the second function, then we can have bad luck because it can happen that when we uh, look at the training set, all the exa all examples in the training set are consistent. But when we pick the test point, uh, it, the, the test point F and G are inconsistent, precisely as we already discussed. So, uh, so we need to bound this probability. So we have to look about this case. So for the first n samples in the training set, f and g are equal, but for the n plus one point, they're not equal. And so what is the probability that this happens? And so now we just think about the symmetry between learning and testing. So we can uh, generate n plus one points and then choose a random point of this n plus one points to be the test point. And so the only way that we will conclude that uh, our test point has wrong predictions is if this n plus one point contain exactly one point where f and g contradict. And when we choose random test point among it, we choose exactly this point. So here we see our inequality. So if we generate random uh, train and test point, probability that we make a mistake for every distribution is one over n plus one. Yeah, so the bad case is just, there is only one bad point and this one point is the least one. And so the conditional probability of the second event, the last one, the conditional probability of the second event is one over n plus one. Yeah. So the probability of two events together is also at most one over n plus one. Yeah. Okay. And so we see that if we take limit over n, then it will go to zero because it's. And for arbitrary finite set, you say that something goes in the same way. Yeah, that's what's written below. So let let us again uh, say as Sasha says. So if we have a finite set and we number the functions, let's take the first one that's consistent uh, with the training data. And so the worst case, so, uh, so if f1 is the true function, then nothing can go wrong. But if, if the true function is the last one, then we can make, uh, we can be wrong in k minus one ways. It can happen that training data is consistent with fi for i equal from 1 to k minus 1. And so we obtain the same bound, but now we have to multiply, we have to apply union bound over these k minus 1 mistakes. 
And so we get this bound. And so, yeah. so, 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 so probability of mis uh, mistakenly taking the real function for, from some fixed function before yeah. is uh, bounded by one over n plus one for the same reason. And so then we multiply this by number of, of functions which can be the source of mistake. Yeah, indeed. And so is it clear? Can, can, can we move forward? It is. So if no questions, probably, yeah. Okay, and then let us make the remark. So we will speak about conjunction and disjunctions. And the problem here is that H is exponential in the dimension, but we want polynomial training size. And so this result is not enough. But I will soon explain you a, a bound, so a faster convergence that is logarithmic in the size of the hypothesis class. For, for, for arbitrary finite? Yeah, for a, a arbitrary finite age. Oh. So we can do better. Okay, but that's for later because I promised to speak about, uh, uh, well, do you want to know about this no free lunch theorem? And that says that if you have all functions, then uh, uh, the class is not learnable. Uh, no, let's consider why not. If if you plan this way, let's let's do it. Let's clear everything. So, but we've already discussed it when we spoke about VC dimension. Not ju just let let's then think. So we have a class of all functions. Yeah, yeah. So here we choose in the lemma, we choose this. And what we assume about about x, for example, if x is finite, probably it's it's still learnable. No, no. Yeah, because then h is finite. And so we are good. Uh, but if x is infinite and we have all functions, then it's not learnable on average. Uh, and the argument was like this. So imagine we have we want to we have some learning algorithm so for some uh, 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 uh error uh, for some epsilon we have some size sample size which is enough to learn with with, with probability epsilon well we don't need epsilon we can have lower bound to one quarter on the test error so i let me ah, okay say how the proof goes so uh, we uh, the real function, so H is used for training and testing, right? Um, and so let us think that reality is random. And so in this case, we will be wrong uh, only when we, uh, so, so, so when we have an input that's not in our training set, we will be wrong with probability one half. But if our input, if our test point is in the training set, we might be correct because we might remember it. So plan is to use probabilistic methods and, uh, and for every learning algorithm. So we will say that for every learner A, there exists a bad H, a bad true classifier. And to find this bad true classifier, we consider random function H. Okay, and so let us first fix the training set S and take a random H and a random test point. Then our test point will be misclassified with probability at least one half probability that we are outside the test set. So is this clear? So this should be clear or I should write it bigger. No, uh, just just finish the argument and then we'll ask people whether they understood okay. because it's, it's yeah. close to, to the end. It's better to ask later. Yeah, and so this is true for a fixed S. So it's also true for a random S generated for of Pn. And so we obtain this algorithm. Okay, uh, it's true for random S. And now let us choose our distribution. So given n, let's pick a distribution over two n elements and uniform over two n elements. What we know is that the probability of being outside S is at least one half. It's actually a bit more because S can have repeated elements. 
So if we have a training set S of size N and we are uniform over two N, two N elements, we are outside S with probability one half. And so here we have that this probability is at least one half times one half. It is one quarter. And so this is true for every N. So for every N we found uh, a distribution P for which this is true. And hence this limit is uh, at least one quarter. Yeah. Okay. So now, now is the time to, to ask, who 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 understood this argument? Who understands this argument for 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 whatever reason? Nobody. <laughs> but who cares? No, I don't understand why uh, the bound uh, does not depend on n. Uh, I, I'm lost at this point. Okay. So what we want to prove, we want to prove that for every n, there exists a bet P and a bet H for which mm -hmm. this probability is at least one quarter. And this bet P is a uniform distribution on two n elements in X. Yeah. And we can choose any two n elements. It doesn't matter. And what is bet H? The bet, bet H, H is the proof, the existence of bet H is proven probabilistically. We assume if forever, if all H's are good, then if we take a random H, we also have good probability. Okay. And if we take a random H and uh, we have to predict uh, in, in half of the cases, we have to predict a, a value at a new point because we have two endpoints and only endpoints in the sample. So half of the points are new. So with probability... So it, it seems that probability of error is one half, if not one half. Oh, because it's of, one quarter because maybe you've seen or you've seen it already. Then you're lucky. Oh, one see, half because see. of a new point and mm -hmm. one half of an error in a new point because we haven't seen it, but we can just guess it correctly for, for, for random reasons. Okay, okay. So one half comes uh, is the probability that the point is new and one another half is the probability that H coincides with the guest value on the point. Yeah. Okay, so who, who now understands the argument? Are the other people? I, I do. Anyone else? Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe there are some questions. It's simple argument. So let's, if there are questions. Okay, let's continue then. Okay, and so now we do something new, which was not in the previous two lectures. Uh, and let's prove that half spaces are learnable on average. Uh, so now X is just a Euclidean space. Yes. And so it's uh, D dimensions. And uh, we first note that uh, half spaces, uh, um, they, they are not used in general, they're not homogeneous, but uh, so, so here is non-homogeneous half space. So sine function is same as heavy side function. So zero and more is mapped to one and the others are mapped to minus one. And it's important here that Y is equal to minus one and plus one. It will help us with notation soon. Um, okay. Yeah, so, so, so you mean that, the, 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 for example, the planes in, in three-dimensional space are arbitrary. They don't need to go through the uh, origin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's a fine half spaces, not, yeah, yeah. not linear general, half, half spaces. spaces are like this, but we don't care. We can think that they go through the origin because we can always append a one to all every data point. And then we get a special case of one dimension higher. So yeah, as, as, as usually a fine space is a, can be embedded into linear space of dimension plus one. Yeah, yeah. And half space, a fine spaces are just sections of the, the, the one bigger dimension, like yeah. linear half space. Yeah, so we can just prove the lemma homogeneous half spaces are learnable on average. Okay. 
Uh, yes. And so I should tell what is the learner. And so learner will map test point x tilde to sine of x tilde times w. And what is w? W is solution of optimization problem. So the constraints are uh, here, these things. And it means that W classifies the training points correctly. We also require that the norm of W is at most one, and we want this margin R, so the, this threshold to be uh, as big as possible. So among so all- let, Let's w, say it again. So what do we have? So we have a f some number of points which are inside the house space, unknown house space. Yeah, yeah. And so no, there are plus points which are should be inside, and there are minus points which should be outside. Yeah. And we know in advance that there exists a plane, a hyperplane, which separates plus points from minus points. Yeah, yeah. But the problem is that this 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 half plane, his plane and half space is not unique because of course there is some slack between the plus points and minus points. Yeah. And we need to, to make some, when we make a new, uh, uh, something for the new point, we, 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 we take something, uh, 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 we need to choose, make some decision. So how the decision is made, say it again. Okay, so how is the decision made? We will look to the distance of the point to the hyperplane. So when we choose a hyperplane here, for example, we will, we will require that all points are on the right side and we want the minimal distance to be maximized. So minimal distance, not the average distance, just, just. The minimal distance. And this is what this equation says. So uh, basically we require that norm of W equals one. We say at most one to make the problem convex, but we um, making W larger always helps to make R larger. So, uh, we can think that norm of W equals one, and then the distance of the point is equal to, so to the height point is equal to X times W. It is the distance of, to the, to the uh, W. It is just projection on, on the no normal factor. So uh, that's also, also it's important to note that uh, at, at the, in this setting, we don't, don't use yet the new point. We are asked about some new point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of, of looking at the new point and the old point, we're just looking at the old point and provide some some hypothetical hyperplane. And then use, I guess, we use this hyperplane for classification the of a, for the new point. Yeah, yeah. indeed. And, and so this projection x times w to the normal vector is just the distance of the point xi to the to to the hyperplane and we maximize the minimal distance so here you see the okay here we get a sine distance if y so if the hyperplane at least classifies correctly then if y i is positive then this should be at least zero if y i is minus one then this should be negative and that means that the product is always positive. So if W at least classifies correctly, we have that this requirement holds. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we, we take the maximal maximal gap uh, uh, yeah. between these things, centered yeah. gaps. Or equivalently, you could think that all minus points we place on the other side, because when we look at yi, xi, uh, this is the same as placing this point to the other side. Yeah, instead of a minus point, the opposite yeah. point, it would be a plus point. It yeah, does. so in this problem, we can think that all labels are positive if you want. Um, Okay, so we, we take uh, uh, the, uh, uh, so this optimal solution. And then I claim that we have this inequality. Probability that the test point is misclassified, let's put an X tilde to be consistent, is at most D divided by N plus one. And so the question is, why is this true? 
So remark can be ignored, the proof stops here. We just need to understand why, uh, uh, why does an equality hold? And this this should be true independent on distributions on the yeah on the so for example it's quite possible that all the axes are in in some place when when in, in, in close to each other so there are a lot of hyperplanes which separates uh, plus and or minus so we cannot learn with any reasonable precision but then the test point is selected also from the same distribution. So for most of, with high probability, the, the test point, the information we are missing is not important for classifying the test point. Yeah, yeah. So the question is why it really works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, so to understand why it works, we have to look to the linear constraints in the system. So I, I, I claim that most of them can be dropped and the optimal W will remain the same. And then we have the same reasoning as before. It means that the points X, I, Y, I can be dropped and uh, without changing the solution. So they're correctly classified. Okay, so let's do it in steps. Imagine that for some point I, we have X, I, times W strictly bigger than R. So we find the solution. And now let's look to point I where, where it is strictly bigger. Then I claim if this point was not there, we would have the same solution. And so do you see why this is? So, okay, the, this is quite uh, hard to see maybe, but first we need to understand that this is convex optimization problem. And convex optimization problem means that you can approximate the solution by local walk. So there is unique solution and you can approximate it with local walk. Uh, oh, sorry, by the way, unique solution at this point, it's maybe difficult to see. Um, no, no, if, 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 no, you really want to use some non-trivial results from, 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 uh, linear algebra, or it's just a kind of, of, of simple argument? Well, I put it in the remark below why the solution is unique. But let's say for now that there is, uh, for the optimal value, R, W is unique. Let, let us believe this. I will prove it later. Okay. So that means that we will, by a local walk, we will go to the optimal point. And so if the uh, inequality is not strict, then we can drop the inequality. It's not pushing on this local point. And so we can drop the inequality and it will still be local optimal point. Okay, so what? Okay, that means that all points where the inequality is strict, they are irrelevant. If we drop them, imagine that if these points were chosen to be a test point, then the prediction will be good. So we will do the same technique again. Instead of looking at n points, we will look at the system for n plus one points. And then we will choose a random point. And if this is an irrelevant point, then we know the prediction would be correct in this point. No, but then so you, you say that uh, no, you, you, you say that first that you can drop all the strict inequalities, but do you claim that the number of, of non-strict inequalities is small or, or, or what? No, not yet. We, there is a second step. We will need to drop all the, the equalities, uh, but I didn't explain it yet. But you asked me, so what? So I already said that uh, all points with strict inequality, they, are, they make us happy. And now we have to find more such points. Okay. So now let us look to all the points where we have equality. Y I X I is equal to R. Okay. So imagine that there are D plus one such points. That W. So our target is D. 
No, you say why y, y, x, i? There should be w, I guess. No? Okay. Uh, so, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Let's write it correctly. Um, okay. The rates, I think. Y, i, x, i times w is equal to r. So let us look to all i such that we have equality. So what yeah. does it mean? If we know r and these points, then we can calculate w. Because we just have a linear system, we need to invert it. And if there are many solutions, we take the one with smallest norm. Yeah, and, and uh, so, uh, and, and what? So if we know um, all the points with equality, then we can calculate the solution. But there, um, it can happen that uh, certain equ equalities are linear combination of each other. And that means if we drop a point that's for which equality is a linear combination of other equalities, then it's irrelevant for us and we don't care about it. So somehow you say that only only n, n, n plus one equations matter and... Yeah, so if you have D dimensions, so in the statistical learning and machine learning, there is recent trend to always call dimension D and n the size of the training set. Uh, so if I have D dimensions, then we can drop. So maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe Kola, you, you, you are an expert in teaching linear programming to idiots. Maybe can, you can use your expertise to explain me this argument. No, it's beyond my expertise, actually. I don't understand uh, actually also what happens here. Uh, probably Bruno claims that if there is mistake, then uh, the last point is irrelevant, right? Okay, so what I claim. So before, recall what we did. We looked at uh, the classifier for n plus one points. And if we can, uh, the classifier doesn't change if we remove one point, then we know that if this point is a test point, it will be correctly classified. Because if there is a mistake, then uh, adding this point would change the classifier. Classifier is consistent. No, but it is, if you take a sample, you take a sample with the test point or without the test point. This is what is confusing. Ah, uh, okay let us say another way. So we want to know whether test point uh, is wrongly classified. Yeah. Correctly classified. So we can do the following. Let's add the test point to the training set and see whether we get the same classifier. If we get the same classifier, it means that original classifier predicted correctly the test point because it's consistent. Yeah. Okay. So now we will do the opposite. Let's look to n plus one points and count the number of points such that if we remove the point, the classifier changes. And so I claim there will be at most d such points. And so this will be proven in two steps. First, we will think about uh, first the first case. Let's think about points where the constraint uh, is strict. And then I claim that because it's convex and solution of W is unique, we can just drop the constraint and the same point will be optimal. 
because we can find the optimal point by local search. Sasha, I think that the, the second part about linear pro programming is very plausible. So what, what, what he says, that the number of points such that removing the, um, the inequality will uh, change uh, the solution. Change the solution. Is small. That's, yeah. And that seems very plausible, I guess. But can you explain why it's true okay, or not? Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, because if we remove a point uh, for which the inequality is strict, that doesn't change uh, the solution, right? No, that's not also not completely obvious for me. There are some blah blah about locality which I don't understand. But okay, imagine that's true. But it, okay, why it's enough? So it's, it's enough. So. Uh, uh, there remains only point for which the inequality uh, specifies as to equality, right? Uh, and among them, take d independent ones. Linearly independent, or linearly independent ones. The maximal possible, uh, the maximal possible number is. At I think linear independence should not be enough because they can be quite close to each other and still still linear independent. So you have some cone, you have a cone with many faces, and uh, if you uh, you need somehow faces from all sides of the cone, not 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 linear, not just linearly independent. Somehow, no. No, but you you have so we we already finished dealing with a in strict inequality, right? So now we have a bunch of equality. We already removed all points with strict inequality. Let's remove them and not think about them. So now we see that all constraints in the optimal point are equalities. Right? Yeah. So it means that uh, uh, if we want to know W, we can solve the linear system. And you say that you take take any linearly independent things. Yeah. No, I think it's not correct. Imagine, imagine we have a I don't know a three dimensional space, and we we somehow we have we have a cone with many facets, and just a, a regular one. So, or, and and the axis of the cone is equally equally distant from all the faces. But I, I I'm confused. We, we have hyperplane. We have a bunch of equalities. Solution is hyperplane. Okay, but but let, let's look on the, on, on in the dual version. We have a solution, a point on a sphere, on a sphere and this point should be far from, from some, some hyperplanes. It's the same. No, no, but why do you need dual system? I, I don't understand. Because it's geometrically more easy to imagine. So our, our hyperplane, which we are looking for, is de defined by vector h, by vector w. Yes. So we have for, for w, we have some inequalities, linear inequalities. Yeah, but now we eliminated all inequalities, we end up with a bunch of equalities. Okay, okay, let them be equalities. So just imagine that this uh, w is an axis of a cone. And uh, this inequality is equalities is a fine subspace. Yeah. So we take a cone which is intersection of many affine subspaces, a regular cone, a regular pyramid. It's just one affine subspace is the solution of all equalities. Okay. There is one point which is inside all this, all, all the all the all the equalities, so to say. Yeah, yeah, and there we take the minimal norm of W. Yeah, so in 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 in, a, in, a, in, a, in other representation, we take a point inside the cone which is most distant for all the all, all all the faces of the cone. Yes, and so imagine the cone is a pyramid, 
and then the, the axis of the pyramid is is the most distant from all the all, all the faces of the pyramid yeah okay yeah but if you uh, but it's not possible to replace the entire pyramid by by a arbitrary linearly independent set of faces because if all these faces are from one side then we lose the then we lose the the the, the uh, it doesn't force other restrictions yeah yeah but we have not inequalities we have equalities so i, I keep being no 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 we don't have equalities the, 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 we are inequalities which are equalities for the for for the best for our point but as a requirement there are still inequalities yes <laughs> And so, if we if we let uh, use only on, only find n plus one of them in, independent of them, this independent in, as as equalities, they determine the position of the, of W. Okay. As inequalities, then they no more determine it. No. Now, is there anyone who understands what I'm saying or not? Sasha, may I interrupt you? Couldn't you ask Bruna to write the kuhn tucker system? It's a criterion in this case. Okay, so, you are not an expert of explaining linear algebra to idiots. So I may, it's maybe not a, some, it's, someone it's, else could. Uh, it's uh, evident it's uh, linear algebra, and it's called a kuhn tucker no, If it says uh, necessary <laughs> and sufficient conditions, it's, it's, it's if, just if, about dual uh, variables that you want. Ask, please, if you say it third know. time in a loud voice, it will not, not, not make clear things clearer for idiots who do not know what is Kuhn and Tucker. I ask so, Bruno, not you, to mm -hmm. write. To write Excuse something. me, it's my microphone. I couldn't regulate it. Excuse me. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I heard about it because people always start speaking about it, but I, I, I keep, I, I, I always forget about it because I don't understand why I need this, but maybe Sasha Shen can at some point convince me. Um, yeah, but still. Uh, the, the... Sa before, Sasha Kazachinsky, do, do, do you understand what, what is, what, what's my objection or not? I don't understand the claim. Oh, the claim is you, you are can, trying to prove or something. No, no. Bruno says, if I understand correctly, that you can select uh, any uh, linearly independent uh, d plus one linearly independent um, this this axis, and then uh, this 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 uh, inequalities um, have the same solution. Have the same solution as original ones. And, and this is, a, in my opinion, this is false. And so I you mean, we have a linear, uh, so if we have some linear program and it has some We know it maximum. has a solution. We know there is only one W that optimizes this. Then I claim that we can drop the linear constraints uh, all except D1. D1. No, no, you, you, you claim more. You claim not only that you can find D, D plus one constraints, which are enough, but you say that you can any independent, linearly independent constraints. And the latter thing I think is, is, is definitely false. While the first one is probably true because of this Kuhn and Tucker story, but which I don't understand and don't know. Okay. Well, uh, but we need only the first one in any case. Uh, we need the first one, but can you prove the first one then? Can you explain the first one? Okay, I, I will try another time. So let us assume... No, you will try to explain the first one or the second one, that you can take any linearly independent ones or, 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 or you can choose some linearly independent ones. Um, any linear independent. But this is wrong. That is what I'm saying. This is plainly wrong. So you, there is no hope you will you will prove this. Active, not any, but active that are uh, fulfilled at the point where the solution is. Pardon me.
Oh, some sound problem. Okay. So Such any on which uh, our maximum uh, is a, any inequality which turns into equality, I guess. No, any on, linear linear in the, so, so the claim that you can take any yes. linearly independent inequalities which turn into equality is false. And I, I tried to explain, Bruno, why the counterexample, but failed. But the counterexample, just you, you have a pyramid and the center of the pyramid, the, the center line of the pyramid is uh, the, on, on given distance from, on the same distance from all the sides. It's, it's the, the only vector yes. just far from all the sides. And all the sides are linear and independent. But if you want to delete almost all of the sites and still have the only on the farthest vector, you need to 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 to, to keep the, the faces from all all the from from different if they are all on one side of, of our uh, pyramid, then the center will be no more the the only solution an optimal solution. That's what I'm saying. Oh, there, there are things in the code. Uh, but that's a linear. You're optimizing the distance, so. No, I, 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 uh, I, I, I require that the distance is at least something. And the only solution is the center, center line of the pyramid where the distance is equal to the something. What? But if we, if we. Keep... What is the, what do you optimize? What do you optimize? So we, we have some, some half spaces uh, which corresponds to the faces of the pyramid and the pyramid is intersection of these half spaces. Yes. And I am looking for, for, for the vector which um, is dist maximal distance from all the half spaces, which is the center line of the pyramid. How is this connected to the claim that we are proving? trying to understand just the same we are I looking for the, the claim is that we have a linear program and we, which has the unique maximum okay but you have a linear program, program over a pyramid quadratic we are looking on, 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 a, on a sphere but okay we're looking for for a maximum uh, on a sphere of a distance up to up to several hyperplanes okay and then, if if the hyperplanes are the faces of a of, of a pyramid, then the solution will be the center line of the pyramid, of course. We we we, we want something which is most far from all the faces, so it's just the cent center line, of, of I a guess it's the least far, no? Sorry, least far. No, we, we, no. We, we want something which is at, at maximal distance to, 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 to the... Um... The sum of distances is, is maximal. Not the sum of the distance, the minimal of the distance should be maximal. The minimal of the distance should be maximal. Yeah, yeah, all, all, the, all the distances should be greater than R. We maximize this R. It's, it's what's written, written on, the, on, the, on the page. Well... Well, I'm not sure, but then we can. What if we take W somewhere? I don't know outside the pyramid. Outside, then some of them will be just negative, which you, we, we need them all to be greater than some positive R. And if we take outside, one of them will be negative. But c c can you explain it on two dimensional example? That we can see what's happening. No, on two dimensional example, I cannot explain, but on 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 on, on three dimensional, three dimensional, I can. Ah, okay, maybe you can draw something. But just can please. you allow me to draw? Then I can draw. No, no, no. You just click up uh, um, some green thing, uh, green uh, and, thing. and try to Gr annotate. Yeah. Yeah, annotate. Yes. Yeah. So so uh, uh, draw. Okay. So imagine we have we we are looking for some W. And then uh, it should be, we have several equations like this. And the equations like this corresponds to some, uh, assume we consider the case, when the equations corresponds to faces of some cone. 
Mm-hmm. So, for example, this x1 is something orthogonal to, 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 to this phase. So we have this cone and we look for a point of a, on a sphere which is, has a maximal distance uh, with, the, with the, the, the faces of the cone. And of course, yes. the distance is obtained when we have the, the where, where we are on the center line of this cone. Yeah. And what, what, what Bruno says has correct part and uh, incorrect part. So the correct part is that you can take, for example, three faces like this, and still uh, the maximal distance will be uh, achievable only in the same center line. Yes. But if instead uh, you, 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 you take th th three faces like this, of course you can then increase the distance and put W in the other th side. And still, still, if you take equi equalities instead of inequalities here, still for this for these three uh, faces, uh, this this inequality oh, you have actually two faces are enough. Uh, mm, mm, the intersection will be just only on on the center point, but this will be not not what is needed for 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 the proof. And for the proof, we need just the, the inequality this 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 green green. Uh, Faces, not red faces are not enough. That's what I am saying. Yeah, but um, well, there is one detail. Like uh, why I x i always lie on the same side, on the same half plane, uh, on the same half space. No, the system. No, this is. So we can. Um, we only have normal vectors of, of, of uh, hyperplanes on one side of the half space. No, they, they are all on one self on, on one side of the half space, which corresponds to W, of course. Yeah, so we they... don't have closed cone. It's always open. What do you mean open? No, this, 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 this I don't understand. So, so if we look in two dimensions. Okay. What I wanted to say is that all points X, I, Y, I are on the same half of some line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here, here the all, 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 all the things, all, all, all the things are, are on the same half of just because we assume that there exists a correct classification. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, so you're and right. And here they are also on the same side. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so it looks like there are some problems somewhere, although I'm confused, because if I think about the equalities, I don't see my error, so... No, equalities, the error is like this. Equalities have indeed the unique solution. And indeed, the equalities are true for our point. But what we need really, that is a unique solution for inequalities. Okay, and so we cannot avoid this KKT business. And then, then we need uh, uh, clever people like Tarasov who know about Kuhn and Tucker. And idiots like me cannot understand this without spe special additional explanation. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, and and I believe that was not needed. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. And, and Sasha, uh, do you understand this Kuhn and Tucker business or not? No. Kole maybe. I remember the formula. <laughs> there, there were some Kuhn people like Kuhn and Tucker. Yeah, but... Kuhn and Tucker, but I don't yeah. see how it helps here actually. Okay, maybe if it's not 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 extremely important, we can postpone the discussion. Okay, and... let's postpone. <laughs> But yeah. there is some 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 trouble here. I think there is there exists something. I'm, I'm yeah, quite okay. quite. I, I agree. I, I need to yeah. think about it. Yeah. Okay. So so um, what about time? Uh, so I... just continue, and then we will stop you at some moment. Okay. 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 Um. So the, then let's go to the second goal, which was to prove that um. So let's go to polynomial time pack learnable and prove that there is a problem. 
um, where we can pack learn in polynomial time uh, improperly, but not properly. So it's the next big goal. Um, okay, but so, you should explain what, what we want, what should be polynomial in, in what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's tricky part. The, there are several papers, and I tried to find the oldest paper, which is 1984 by Valiant, but it considers active learning. But you can uh, uh, ignore one part, which he does for his main theorem, and then get the, the real setting, which, which is uh, very closely related to a book, uh, which is book number three, uh, Computational Learning Theory by Kearns and Vazirani. And they have some very close uh, definition, and most papers cite uh, these references. Okay, so here is the definition. So, well, let us say, let us repeat, what does PEC, what does PEC learning stands for? It means prob probably approximately correct learning. And so this definition, it has two parameters, a parameter epsilon, that measures how correct is our classifier compared to the true classifier and uh, probably so this probably approximately correct learning probably means that with high probability over generation of training set we are correct so there is an issue in definition original definition probabilistic algorithm is used so given training set you can apply probabilistic algorithm but um, it doesn't matter because you can uh, extract probability from the random generation of training samples. So we can think about deterministic algorithm given the training set. No, no, just uh, I mean, I'm lost. So first of all, you now consider a different setting when we have used the, the training set and then not wait until we get a question. But after looking at the training set, we produce some mm, mm, ha hypothesis. Well, it, it doesn't and, matter much. It doesn't matter much. Okay, but let's fix something. Uh, uh... I, I only need algorithm. Uh, so what's happening now is that we have algorithm that has access to an oracle that gives infinite sequence of randomly generated inputs. And also a second oracle that gives corresponding labels. And now our algorithm needs to run in polynomial time, so it cannot read much of this oracle. Um, okay. Okay. So you say that there is there is a set of set a set, we have still x and y, which can yeah. be infinite and, and and whatever. Yeah. Y y zero zero one. Yeah. And then you have some class H, with no assumption about uh, uh, countability, computability, just a class H. Yeah. yeah. And then you say that this class is a uh, pack learnable in polynomial time. Yes. If something, just say say it again. What is the definition? Okay. So a, uh, a class is par pack learnable if what? Yeah. If pack learnable, if there exists a mapping, and this, uh, if there exists an algorithm, algorithm has oracle access to uh, an infinite sequence of randomly generated uh, training, so an infinite training set and the labels h of s an infinite sequence of corresponding labels uh, and given a test point so a test point is misclassified with probability epsilon if we fix the oracle if we fix this training set so now setting is different you don't look for the probability of error uh, uh, for for the, the random yeah. training set and random point but you you look the the, the, the deviation of answers uh, a random devi random probability of error for a, 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 an output provided uh, yeah yeah so we fix the oracle and then we want that uh, um, the error is at most epsilon so the measure of misclassified points is at most epsilon yeah and this is different if we require, as in the old setting, require the probability of error of classifying a random point after a random sample. It's the yeah. same or different? No, well, it's different, but um, but in practice, it will be the same. 
So it is because equivalent of definition of inequality, or not? Yeah, because of Markov inequality, it, it comes down to, uh, in the, to the same definition. So the definition will be equivalent, but you yeah. put it in the different way. And what should the polynomial, the size of the sample and the computation time of the algorithm? Yeah, but I put it in a different way because now we need to think about the runtime of A. So it needs to be polynomial in these two parameters, epsilon and delta. And then, uh, okay, and here papers are not fully consistent, but all this paper require that, uh, uh, sorry, by the way, um, H is now not a set of classifier, but programs for classifiers. And these programs have a length. So H, uh, the algorithm should be polynomial in the length of the program, but the algorithm doesn't know the length of the program. And it should be a polynomial in the input dimension of H. So every classifier will have input dimension. What is input dimension? Okay. So, um, Sasha, we, Sasha, yeah. we, we have notion of size uh, for, for each hypothesis H. We have certain size or length of that hypothesis. And that length is known to the algorithm. Yeah, so for example, H will be the class of uh, three CNF formulas uh, on D dimensions. Uh, so, so H will be the class of CNF formulas. And so CNF formulas, they have uh, 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 inputs of dimension D. So the number but of- Anderson, in our definition, H is fixed. When we say of H is pet learnable, but say some H is fixed, yeah? Yeah, so H is a set of programs. And for example, you can think about conjunctions. Okay, so but for, for, for a given H, which is learnable or not, the dimension D is fixed or not. I don't yeah, so for every, so for, so H can be equal to conjunctions. Of, of D variables. Or arbitrary number of variables. Or arbitrary number of variables. So, we can so what you say that H is not, 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 uh, uh, in your definition, you say that H is, is defined for given D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but um, it's not the case. So, so each element for H accepts um, inputs of a certain dimension D. So H is not... Uh, Sasha, Sasha, forget about, about D. In our example, we will uh, have no D actually. So forget about D at all. Just think uh, of X as a countable set, for example. Yeah. Okay. And then H is a class of, 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 of predicates defined uh, uh, over all X. Or, or, or on some different subsets of X. Yeah, so what Kolya says is actually what Valiant insists in his introduction, but then he doesn't apply it in the in the proof. So I'm very confused in this 1984 paper. Um, so let's let, think. Sasha, let, let's think that H is a class of all, all conjunctions, for example. Yeah. Any conjunction can be a member of H. Yeah. And of arbitrary number of variables. Yes, yes. And the, uh, and the size of a conjunction is just defined as its length, I guess. Yeah, uh, as, as we get a program. But we have to be careful because um, this defines a mapping, for example, from uh, 0, 1, 5 to 0, 1. But we can also view it as a mapping from 0, 1, 20 to 0, 1. All right. So maybe length plus the number of variables. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I mean with input dimension. So in these two examples, the size is the same, but the input dimension is different. So the algorithm receives uh, the number of variables. Yes. Yes, because it can see the training set is sampled from uh, X. So here, so it gives the number of variables and the size of the conjunctionals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So since it receives examples, it knows the input size and dimension. Mm -hmm. But I need something uniformly over all dimensions because we need a fixed polynomial. It needs to work over all dimensions. And so in the book, 
by Vasirani, Kearns and Vasirani, they make this all explicit and they speak for 20 pages about how to make things uniform and representation sizes and so on and so on. But I think just we should view the program with a fixed, uh, that receives fixed inputs of some size. Okay, now if, if, if you speak about that example for conjunctions, that's okay. But if you claim to define, to, to have a definition of what is pack, pack learnable, then it would be better to know what is the object which is pack, can be pack learnable or not pack learnable. We cannot just, and, and, and in, in the definition on the screen, it's something confusing. The role of D is confusing. confusing. Yeah, I, I agree, it's confusing. I, 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 okay, let, 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 let them consider some example. Maybe, okay. maybe, Sasha, if we consider just Boolean function on arbitrary. Yeah, I will only talk variables, about Boolean functions. Then we can just say that we have some complexity measure on them. And in our case, in, in conjunction, we have just, you know, <laughs> okay, we just have conjunction, but let's say if we have, I don't know, decision trees, we can consider decision tree complexity. And the algorithm, uh, so what is pack, well, formally what is pack learnable is some complexity measure on Boolean functions. And representations of Boolean function, which is given by program. So in that case, it's decision trees or conjunction or something else. So we have some representation, we, I don't know, we can try to define it formally, that it's some function from Boolean functions to some programs. Okay, is... you, you, you open some exciting perspective of future definitions, but for, for now I am lost. But may, maybe again, again we can consider an example and then return to, to yeah. general things. Okay, um, so let us say that H uh, is, a is a subset of programs for functions from uh, each subset of uh, X, no, union over D, something like this. So programs, so we consider, no, it doesn't help. Okay, let's uh, not say anything. <laughs> that is just the safest strategy, definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. okay. Let, let's consider an example. Maybe then then, then we can learn yeah, something yeah, yeah. from okay. example without the, the general definition. Yeah, because it's all, almost time anyway. And uh, um, Okay, first example. Uh, Conjunctions are pack learnable, you see. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So why the conjunctions are pack learnable? Ah, okay, okay, yeah. So first, let's go to my promise where I, I promised faster yep. convergence. Let's first say that if H contains two classifiers, let's prove that this is pack learnable. And and uh, uh, um, okay, but uh, if we have two classifiers, we don't have a notion of computability. Though, so let's just uh, check the probabilistic statement. So if we generate a training set, then uh, so so I, I I go back to the old definition of learning algorithm here. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter much, but uh, let le let's go go back anyway. Um, and and so. Uh, uh, let us think what happens if H contains two classifiers. Can can we have this uh, sharper? So how many samples do we need to 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 get a certain accuracy delta? So you say that the 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 the, the bound which we have before about one over n plus one is for just for the same algorithm is not optimal. Yeah, yeah. So let's first think a bit about the better bound, and then we can get uh, many results. Uh, so okay. here there is no computability issues here. We yeah, just, just improvement of the probability bound for, yeah. for the previous case. Okay. Yeah. So what is this improvement? Um, okay. So uh, here we prove that the error probability goes down exponentially faster than mm -hmm. 
So this delta goes exponentially fast in N, and uh, we can get this exponential improvement if we make a, a right trade-off between delta and epsilon. But I'm not going, we don't need this. So let us just prove this lemma. Okay, but the, the, the classifier is the same. We take the first function, which is okay with our sample, or, or we... Yeah, yeah. L -l learning algorithm yeah. is the same. Yeah. But, but just will... the bound is better. Yeah, yeah. Bound okay, so better. how you get the better bound? Uh, okay, so again, we have to think that the true function is the second one. Um, and so let us bound uh, probability that we are consistent with the first one, the training set, the first endpoints are consistent with uh, F, with the first one, but the test point is consistent with the second one and it's different. Yeah. Uh, so we just have to look to the uh, probability so, so uh, we need to assume that uh, probability that F and H are different is at least epsilon. So th th this is this thing. So let us assume that F and H are different on many points. So then what is probability that F and H are equal on all of the training set of size N? So, uh, we know, let us look at the first point. So by assumption, probability that the first point is equal is one minus epsilon. So probability that for the X1, the first training point, probability that F and G are equal is at most one minus epsilon. That's just what I assumed. We assumed that F and H are uh, often different according to the distribution. Okay. The same is true for the second point. And so this is, adds up multiplicatively. And then we use this inequality to compute this thing. No, so, so, but, but, but let, 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 let me check if I understand correctly. So we have previously, we have the one probability, which is yeah. depending on N, which yeah. is that we make an error after learning on, on N, N random point in a new random point uh, for testing. Yeah. yeah. You don't claim that this probability goes exponentially fast to zero. Now, you don't say that this probability goes exponentially fast. Or you say this. Yeah. So, I, okay, L let me say it differently. Uh, so, sorry, I'm a bit tired. Um, but, so, what, uh, what, we want to, what I want to say is, here this lemma says that probability of generating a bad set S goes down exponentially fast. For a fixed epsilon, so yeah, epsilon is, is, is epsilon. not exponentially yeah. small. That's yeah. what, what important. Yeah. yeah, sorry, that should be epsilon. So for for, for the for, for the original setting, when we take a n training point and one random test point, the probability of error does not go to zero exponentially fast. Yeah, but of course, since this goes exponentially fast, we can choose epsilon exponentially small, and then we get our previous result. No, if we get epsilon, for example, n square, one over n square, we don't get anything. Reasonable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, oh, okay. I, I said something terrible. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's yeah. So this, this is here. It's very yeah. important that we use a different to to, yeah. to separate the probability over uh, uh, separate the probability of getting a, a wrong prediction and pr precision of this prediction. So precision is still not exponentially small, but the probability yeah, yeah. to get, so, get sorry, yeah, yeah, oh, uh, yeah, okay, I, yeah, that's a bad mistake. So my announcement is not true from this remark uh, some time ago. Okay, but uh, so so we can have uh, exponential uh, confidence, exponentially small confidence delta, and exponentially small confidence, but only in a polynomially small error. Yeah, yeah, right. Good point. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, okay, so then we, mean, we need to uh, bound the, this. And, and so when does it happen? When this S uh, not representative? So if, if uh, one of the two classifiers makes many mistakes, but we don't have these mistakes in our training set. Yeah, so, so we, we, end times we should avoid an event of probability epsilon, and this is exponentially small over minus epsilon n. And this is what is explained. Yeah.
Okay. And so uh, um, if H contains two classifiers, we have proved as an equality. Yeah. And if 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 we have many, many a larger H. Yeah. Okay. So then uh, let us again use the same learning algorithm. Let's use the first function that consists into a training data. And then um, in the worst case, the true function is the last one. And then we can make your K mistakes. Size of H is K plus one. Yeah. So there are K different mistakes that we can make. So we need to apply union bound, which is done here. Yeah, but the size of H can be large or, or can be somehow exponentially large or not? Uh, yes, it can be. So this still works for exponentially large K. Yeah. That's exactly the idea. So that's why conjunctions are pack learnable. So that's a finite set, but it's the uh, number of conjunctions over D variables is at most three to the power D. Yeah, so why, why, what does it mean that they are pack learnable? So as an algorithm, how many, how many elements we ask? Uh, okay. And, and, and so, so in, in what are the number of variables? How, how things going in, in, in which order they are chosen? I, I don't... Okay, uh, let, let's prove uh, the corollary for monotone disjunctions to, to make things a little bit easier. What is monotone disjunctions? The no negated literals. And conjunctions or disjunctions? Oh, sorry, uh, conjunction. Okay, okay. Okay, so just all with conjunctions of positive literals. So for example, yeah. X1 and X2. Uh, and next yeah yeah okay so uh we we want to to have um we want to, to choose the training size like this and why can we choose it like this um well because the size of, of monotone conjunctions is at most this so h is two to the power d yeah so if we choose n like this which is polynomial in in uh, d one over epsilon and one over delta then we can apply this result and see that probability over s is at most delta or is at most delta but and what so is the algorithm how do we learn Okay, but now we need to learn in polynomial time. And uh, what we can do, this proof works for any consistent learner. So we just need to have one learner that works in polynomial time and is consistent with training data. And so consistent learner will just output, it will predict one if for the test point X, all the ones are included in, uh, so if it only have ones that are included in all the set of all ones of every learning point for every point in the training set. So for all, so here is written, let's write it bigger. So for all S and for all Z in the training set for which H of Z equals one, we make sure that the ones in Z are included in the ones of X. If this condition is satisfied, then we predict one. So for example, if we see, so we ignore the, um, the points that are predict, uh, are have label zero in the training set. And so uh, if the training set consists of this and uh, zero one, And we receive a point uh, zero, one, uh, zero, zero, zero. 
then we will predict one because it has only one that appears in every positive example. But as you said, if, if, if we have conjunctions, the less ones we have, the worse is for us. Why, why, would we predict, why do we predict one? So why we do predict one? Yeah, because if, if, if there is a conjunction, uh, which is one in, in which is one in, in, in both these cases, uh, somehow now we have something which is smaller than has less one than any of the examples. So wh wh why we still predict one? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I mixed up with these junctions. Um... Oh, sorry. So the okay. truth is for this junction, Sash. Not for, for conjunction. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. I, I should do it for this junction. This junction are still monotone. If we have something which is one for, 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 for a big number of ones, why we just predict the same one for small number of ones here? I am lost. Okay, maybe we should stop now. Sorry. And uh, I suggest the next time, uh, Sasha Kazachinsky, who, who <laughs> ended us in this world of puppet learning, will give a short, uh, short repetition of the all, all what was today. And we will, then we will blame him for not understanding what is happening. Okay, uh, I, I really apologize. No, no, no. No, no, no. It's always happened with learning, and then that's normal. <laughs> but but let so we will we will not have problem. Sasha, Sash, will you are, are you uh, able to to provide some some clarification next time for the beginning, and then Bruno will continue. I think Sasha disappeared. So <laughs> yeah, he answer. ran away. Okay, but <laughs> but okay, Thomas. But then you are a co-author, so if Sasha is not able to it, it disappear, then you are responsible for. You started all this, this bug business, so you, 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 are, you need to be somehow responsible for the, the, this, this outcome of this. Okay. Yeah, I suppose, or Valentino can help me. Yeah, also you know, between yourself, who will be the, the, the god of, of, in Russian, it's Kazyol the, 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 the somehow which is, which is, sacrificed for the for the for, 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 for this but just just it's, it's important for understand that's really an important thing and it's a pity that we have some kind of of of, of bad and uh, uh, uneducated in this thing so so may, may, may maybe just a short short recall uh next time will be will, will be useful by the way thomas will you be still in Berlin next monday yes Yes, okay. I'm traveling only in the evening on Monday. Okay. Ah, in the evening on Monday. Okay, yes. very good. So, so ne next time will be the same time then. Yeah, yeah, but 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 in in maybe then indeed some somebody else should be responsible for that. <laughs> Otherwise, if you will miss your train because of, of our seminar, it's not a good idea. <laughs> but, so, but, Sasha, can I just try to explain things to you in advance? And then right, yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. You, 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 it's, it's easy to have uh, uh, in, in Russian, it's, it's, it's called <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. okay, if you understand what does it mean in Russian, no, no, uh, uh, Sasha, you're using a reference to, to some Soviet movie from 1960s. Don't ask this from Bruno. It's <laughs> okay. Very okay. Advanced okay. vocabulary. No, no, I, I don't want this embarrassment the second time, so I want to train in advance. <laughs> and it's for YouTube forever, forever to see forever. <laughs> no, no, no. You are not so you're not you you are not experienced enough because experienced people are not uh, afraid of being embarrassed. That happened so many times in their life that once more we will not change the total score significantly. So uh, yeah, no, no, okay. I, don't keep that doesn't learn and keep doing them. <laughs> okay. okay, 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 okay. Maybe we can ask Sasha or someone also to 
so but i'm i'm quite ready to to be used for for the for the training set yeah, yeah. Oh, that is good yeah thanks uh, okay. so, so 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 thanks and then next time we'll, we'll continue at the point where we stopped okay I see you. cool uh, okay so i, I will remove the errors that i'm aware of from the text and then <laughs> i can send it to the mailing list replaced by some other okay well, <laughs> it's a good idea <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah okay. bye Bye. Bye.